Hello. You know, uh, for many years I wanted some kind of uh, desktop uh, player with good amplification, digital to analog converter and Android for streaming services. Of course, there were some solutions of this kind, uh, but usually they were either expensive or limited. And then appeared FIO R7 that actually fulfilled my dreams and uh, since its introduction it was my most favorite and most used device uh, ever. I'm working at laptop and so I'm constantly listening to music, so R7 fit into this scenario really well. But uh, at the end of last year or at the beginning of this year, FIO introduced R9 and uh, if uh, R7 costs about $700, now the price is uh, $1,500, which uh, is a really big jump. It costs more than two times higher. Uh, at the same time, difference is not huge, actually. I want to show you the box, which uh, like explains that topic of this video will be R9. So what did they change? They change digital tonal converter and here it's <laughs> probably the most famous uh, ESS9038 Pro, two of these chips. They uh, doubled channels of the amplifier. He also used THX but now it's eight channels. It can deliver up to seven uh, thousand milliwatts or simply say seven watts of power. Also few changed uh, the things that some dislike for R7. They've added separate chips for the Bluetooth and for USB they've added XMOS and some Qualcomm chip. Also they've added HDMI and HDMI IRC outs and uh, they revamped the design, added bigger display. So, as you can see, nothing drastic, uh, but let's have a closer look and try to figure out what it gives, what's the difference and uh, what's the sense of all that. So, I will skip the unboxing part. R9 comes into stylish box made in old FIO style and inside you're getting the device itself and a separate box with a lot of different accessories. So, uh, what we've got here. We are getting uh, microfiber cloth because it's absolutely necessary here. You're getting uh, RM1 or is it RM3? I don't remember the exact uh, marking, but uh, you're getting Fuse uh, Bluetooth remote control. Pretty nice and convenient. I bought one separately to use with R7. You're getting uh, power cord with uh, uh, with connector appropriate for your region. You're getting two rubber stands, one angled, actually I'm using it right now, and uh, one is uh, straight, if you want to uh, set the device straight. So you're getting USB type A to USB type C cable, also you're getting two, uh, two cups, two caps, actually not cups, caps, so if you want to open ports completely, for example, if you're using it with external amplifier only. Or you can use this black one to cover only XLR. Also, you're getting these strips. To be on, it's some kind of stickers, but uh, to be honest, I didn't uh, understood why they are for. Maybe it's to uh, glue them uh, at the bottom, not sure, so actually I should probably google that, but I don't know. And also you're getting 6.3 mm adapter and the separate fuse. So as you can see, accessory set is really decent. In terms of the design, from one hand it's beautiful and stunning, from another hand it's definitely not uh, for person suffering from the obsessive compulsive disorder, because few decided to make uh, maximum luxury design and uh, they t took idea from luxury cars and they made the R9 uh, be metallic. So this part is mostly, uh, most probably made of aluminium, while this one is made of stainless steel and it's uh, electroplated to mirror like uh, dark gray material and also it, ca uh, it has uh, protective glasses applied on top and this surface is used 
from one, two, three, four sides here. And on the front you getting this uh, big six inch uh, full HD screen. It looks absolutely gorgeous, uh, but be careful actually you can uh, uh, un unstuck and remove this uh, covers and in this case it will be probably prone to scratching but also it gathers fingerprints like crazy and it's really hard to wipe it so uh, i wipe it right before this video with that microfiber cloth uh, but you can see i just touch it briefly and it's already covered with fingerprints and also dust is can be noticeable too so you wiping dust from one surface it gets on the other but it's the price that you have to pay for the beauty on the front side you're getting six inch uh, touch screen really nice in terms of quality and other things i will turn it on of course and show you later three outputs uh, so four pin xlr 4.4 uh, uh, balanced and 6.3 unbalanced. Also here we having uh, output switch, so it's uh, both uh, headphones output and line out, then headphones output, then uh, preamplifier output, it's line out with uh, adjustable volume. And the last one is line out, it's just uh, uh, fixed volume output. Also here is encoder to change the volume. And also it can be pressed, uh, it does a few things in the interface. Nice rotations, good well-defined clicks. Here you can see honeycomb-like structure used for uh, cooling. And on the back side we have a lot of actually interfaces. So you can see additional cooling grill. Uh, this I assume it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. Also slot for uh, micro SD or just SD cards, USB 3.0 output and then HDMI in, HDMI out that supports ARC, so you can use it in uh, complicated uh, setups uh, with uh, your TV or video. Then this part is dedicated to power supply, you can connect here just uh, stock power cable and this toggle is to turn it on and off. Also, you can toggle the switch for the ground pin lift, uh, maybe useful in some situations. And you can select between AC power and DC power. So let's toggle it for AC, I need it for now. Or you can use the uh, 15 volt 3 ampere uh, DC power source. Actually, Fio's own PLA50 uh, in the, uh, declares uh, only 15 volts and 2 amps. Uh, but I'm using it with R9 pretty okay and uh, uh, I suspect that part of this uh, current just goes to power USB ports and if you're not powering USB port with some power hungry devices like uh, uh, hard drives for example and if you don't use ultra high gain 2 amperes will be more than enough and actually it was uh, confirmed by Fio in the HeadFi thread. Also, then we have a lot of inputs outputs. So we have line out, two pairs of line out. You can see single ended, pay one pair of balanced uh, line out. Then we have uh, coaxial out, optical out, coaxial in, and optical in. Also, you can connect uh, here uh, your Ethernet. And another port is USB host. Also, you can connect hard drives or something useful that you'd like to see here. So let's turn it on. I connected it to power supply, press button, so it starts uh, booting. I will hold it at slightly bigger angle. And actually you can see that there is uh, there are a lot of LED uh, highlighting. So you can see the light strip here. You can see the light strip around this uh, two indicators and you can see it partially here but now under the bright light it's not that visible if you don't like this different color highlights you can actually turn them off by default they change color and show you the resolution of signal it's playing now here is main screen as you can see it became bigger so there is more free real estate uh, 
probably I won't stop much on the operation system. It's just familiar Android 10. Few promised to upgrade it to Android 12. Actually, it uh, should have happened in the first quarter of this year, but actually first quarter is over, but still I suppose it will be done uh, in some near future. So it's open Android. You can install a lot of applications here, like whatever you want, uh, different streaming services, Plex Media Server, and so on and so forth. So just few new additions, few added uh, global system-wide equalizer, and it supports parametric equalization too. And now we have this few cast, uh, so we can select what we want, and then we can connect uh, from the smartphone, tablet, or some other device, and just as remote control, control the screen of this device. Besides that, it's few music that we, we've seen many times and we are familiar. Uh, it's not loaded with my music yet. Uh, I mainly use it for Apple Music and I really enjoy it in this aspect, especially with this animated covers. It looks nice. Actually, firmware is nice. It's matching my... Uh, it's fitting all my preferences. I'm not doing some compli complicated uh, things, just listening to music, streaming services and stuff like that. In this aspect it works uh, really well and actually really like it. And when we start playback, actually you can see that indicator changes color uh, to the matching the playback. So it's just 44.1 kilohertz, so it's just uh, plain yellow. It looks uh, uh, like uh, it's flickering on screen, but of course it, in real life it doesn't flicker, definitely. So, Firmware is familiar, nice, few solidified with R7 and uh, work on this too. So actually all the Android devices on Snapdragon 660 should probably receive uh, Android 12 upgrades in some future. But anyway, good Android device that suits many needs. And of course let's talk about the sound. I want to do sound description a little bit different this time. I spend like a week listening to this device and I'm a bit bored with my traditional test and demo tracks. So we'll do it in the opposite way. I have uh, on the Apple Music uh, uh, Solid Gold Hits collection and we'll be trying to find some examples out of this collection. Because I know a lot of these tracks, you know a lot of these tracks, so we'll be uh, find, finding uh, examples on the go. So, uh, in general, it has some similarity with R7, but it's like, you know, R7 done on a different new level. First of all, uh, 9038 Pro is the best digital tonal converter by ESS, or one of the best, and it g gave a noticeable improvement in the treble area. It uh, helped with technicality on the mid frequencies. And in general, this device sounds more monitoring, more resolving, uh, and more natural compared to R7. And it has uh, less uh, that dynamic boost, uh, so it gives you more reference sound signature. And at the end, I will try to elaborate why I think uh, that it's a necessary change. Also, in the Bluetooth mode and in USB digital tonal converter mode, you'll get noticeable improvements because of separate chips used. In the DAC mode, you'll get uh, noticeable improvement in stage, lower delay, and actually lower delay in Bluetooth receiver mode too. So, bass is deep, it goes to the maximum depth, it has really good punch and rumble on the deep bass. But uh, luckily that uh, deep bass stays on its place and there is no attempt to highlight the deeper layers of bass to make everything more efficient, more, uh, more punchy, more present and so on. So bass is really technical with tones and tones of small nuances and details that gives you absolutely great texturing and it gives you really great sense of realism for the audiophilic recordings with nice uh, properly recorded instruments and stuff like that. So what started playing? Let's pause it for a while. 
And uh, for, with electronic music, there is zero boost in low frequencies, so it more it will be it, it will depend more on your headphones or earphones. So, for example, here with Meze Empyrean 2, it's pretty enjoyable experience. Let's find something with. I won't be really original here. It's Billy Jean. You can see how great animated covers look here, and uh, good bass line, good drums, and on top of that, uh, uh, Michael Jackson's voice. Great instrumental, actually, that hello from the times where even pop music was really interesting and really, uh, like, uh, really well thought and, uh, more, and gave more variety, that's what I was trying to catch the thought. And here you're getting perfect amount of low frequencies, enjoyable and uh, uh, not shadowing mids or something like that. Oh, and what else can we find? For example, I'm still standing. Uh, it's, there is no big bass line, but uh, here you get that uh, uh, bass guitar part and it sounds also enjoyable. A lot of interesting things here. So, we'll return to that a bit later. So, 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 so. Another Michael Jackson. Actually, somewhere here I saw... Uh, Sweet Dreams and their, uh, their uh, superb bass line also sounds really engaging and interesting. Mid frequencies are absolutely natural, no attempts to boost dynamics like Fio usually does and it's monitoring, not actually focused on the micro contrast, but if you decide to hear tiniest, smallest nuances, you will definitely be able to do that. And that means that everything here depends on headphones and on the record, because absolutely zero coloration, zero attempts to add something like weight or uh, highlight or hide some nuances. So if there is some flaws in records, uh, you will hear it. And uh, for example, let's see one Highland jump, not perfectly recorded. You can hear that actually Vocal is a bit rough and uh, there is a slight traces of post-processing, but still pretty energetic and emotional track. And of course, uh, guitar solo sounds really superb because of that focus on the every single and uh, smallest nuance. Stage is really big, really spacious, maybe not compare, maybe slightly worse than top of the line uh, devices, but actually uh, in I haven't heard these devices, uh, so it's one of the biggest stage I've heard, even compared with stage uh, kings like Aston Kern Ultima SP2000, it ha offers similar width and similar positioning of instruments, their size and realism, maybe slightly worse depth, but still really, really great, well-built stage. Uh, and here is, for example, uh, Take It On The Run by Rayo Speedwagon, uh, really great track, really emotional, uplifting, lot, uh, offering a lot of interesting uh, changes in tempo and stuff, and also thanks to this uh, device it sounds in all the nuances and details. Probably I'd, uh, it would be better if I selected some audiophiliac tracks, some like classical music pieces, uh, you know, some uh, audiophilic jazz, but actually not that much people listen to purely audiophilic tracks. So I really enjoy browsing this list, seeing uh, what uh, what actually here, what I've heard, uh, like Heaven is a Place on Earth by Berli uh, Belinda. Actually, what is her surname? I never managed to pronounce it. Carlisle, probably, and great vocal, sounds really enjoyable. Uh, Tom Petty's Free Falling, another example of great vocal. 
Eye of the Tiger, like probably the most overused track in the history of cinema, but still really nice engaging percussions and that uh, uh, pumping uh, a bit riff also sounds really great. So uh, actually whatever you will uh, throw to this device, it will play it at the maximum level. And actually treble is probably the best part here at all because Maybe it's subjective, but I really like uh, 9038 uh, treble performance and thanks to the good amplification you're getting like maximum uh, uh, extension in the treble area, you're getting great both basic and extended overtones, perfect uh, balance of attacks and decays, really good layering uh, and that gives you sense of realism sense of presence uh, in the at the record place and uh, that gives you that great immersion to the music absolutely technical and uh, uh, absolutely superb i don't know we can select hungry like the wolf by duran duran not perfectly recorded in terms of treble but still uh, really adding uh, a lot of nuances Roxanne by the Police is actually pretty nice remaster with uh, also a lot of good percussions. Here probably I should uh, show something like Sting with his signature percussions and say that absolutely layering and sup superb representation of treble will give you that uh, nuances and overtones, but actually I don't see Sting in this list. A lot of different artists, but not no Sting, maybe I missed him. Or maybe I overestimate uh, his worldwide popularity, I don't know. But I think you can believe me, it's like a uh, great treble performance. So if you want some coloration in the sound, it's not the device for you. But actually, uh, Fio made it absolutely technical and probably it was their statement or it was the idea because uh, it's a step forward compared to R7 and it meant to be used with more high-end speakers, for example, with more high-end headphones, with everything else like on the newer level. Because, for example, Fio FT5, they are great, but they don't show full potential of this device. While with R7, it's like somewhere nicely balanced pairing. SP3 is great, but also it's more like uh, the device that will suit uh, more for the R7. And uh, I suspect that uh, R9 is a companion for the new SP5 that will be announced uh, and the new ST5 headphones and other more uh, high-end stuff like here. So, speaking about the comparisons, actually the only device I have tested is R7 and actually it's more uh, highlighting dynamics, it's more musical, less resolving, with uh, worse stage, with uh, worse uh, treble, treble uh, layering. It's, it's good, it's great, but still this one is better. So roughly speaking, you know, um, probably R7 is something like uh, Fio M11 Pro or maybe M15 and this one is M17 on steroids will actually new M23 is coming, will be really interesting to see what it gives. And the main question here, of course, uh, should you buy this one or not? Uh, the answer is, do you want to invest more and more into your setup? If you like, uh, not, if you're not planning to buy some headphones uh, higher than $1,000, if you're not planning to build some multimedia setup, for example, buy some expensive active speakers, you can definitely stay with R7. Value it offers is absolutely stellar. But if you're thinking about some more advanced uh, setup with probably with some video playback capabilities or at least integrating with your receiver or media player like I do, and if you're thinking about more expensive he headphones, it will be uh, best uh, uh, best investment. In terms of headphones, actually, it's pretty universal. Despite of tons of power, it has a really good black background with sensitive IEMs, and it can drive 
virtually any headphones. I don't know, maybe uh, like few exceptions, but still like 7 watts of power. I'm pretty sure that it will be more than enough of, of almost for anything on the market. So really interesting device, like a uh, common situation where it's not the best in terms of price to quality ratio, but at the same time it's uh, best in absolute manner. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and have a great day.